welcome to Olivia Owen, who also tied for sixth place out of many hundred competitors in our 28-day Sea Astride Challenge. Well done, Olivia. Welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Tell us the name of your horse, because he's a gorgeous skewboard or piebald, I'm not sure. She's Cold a piebald. She's a piebald. Piebald, thank you. So yeah. she's black and white, and she comes into the water for the before me day. So just to, to keep everybody lined up, this is a 28-day challenge where you have 5,000 words that I've written. You have a lot of videos that we've made and Rachel's put into small sort of few second, few minute um, little little packages. And every week we had a masterclass and also every week in a different evening we had question and answers. So we had quite an intense four weeks. And if you wanted to join the challenge for a whopping prize, if you were looking to win, you get five thousand dollars. It was ten thousand dollars in all. Um, you had to do a before video and an after over the same fence on the same horse. And your little mare is called Whisper. The light Whisper. The chocolate. <laughs> Whisper comes into the water and quite not particularly um, desiring to go anywhere, but she does. She does. She canters in and canters across and jumps the fence without much sort of impetus and without much real desire and that was before yep roll on 28 days and she comes into the water in the same way but she's got much more purpose and you come out of the water with much more purpose and boom over the fence with much more purpose safe as houses there's nothing about it that made me go Ugh. it was absolutely super and i wanted you to tell me what you felt you'd gain from following that challenge through those 28 days and five thousand words and all those videos Oh, like a lot, like just a whole different outlook on it all. Um, she's such a backwards mare to begin with anyway, because um, she lacked confidence, I lacked confidence. Um, it just gave us that sort of that little kick that we needed just to go and sort of go for it, let go a bit and just ride. And I think it was more stop worrying about the approach to the fence, stop worrying about the fence and, and more get into it and then it just makes it so much easier I mean you're not then dialed in on how you're going to jump the fence how you're going to get over it you're more dialed in get into it go in yeah and go on instead of just oh my god it's a big fence I'm scared you know <laughs> was, I love yeah. that description that you use dialed in and, and yeah. it's so lovely when you can actually not dial into the approach but dial into just let's get over this fence and almost make everything a little bit more uh, a little bit less perfect a little bit more let's just do it yeah yeah she's not she doesn't get she's not like the prettiest we do sort of rough it out a bit but you got to do it sorry like how we did in the after video not how we did it in the before video. Oh, but I think it takes uh, it takes time to to learn and to have the confidence to motivate a horse that as you said is a little bit lacking desire to go forward and that's because she's made the way she is. We we all of us pop out of our mothers made the way we are. And it's because maybe she lacks a little bit of <laughs> confidence in herself and in you. But all in all, it's she's a little bit backward in going forwards. And that's something that almost every book you ever open tells you. The horse must go forwards. I mean, that's yeah. constituent across every single bit of education that you have. And if you've got a very wild and wiry, thoroughbred type horse, to be very careful to learn to sit quiet because if you say come on let's go like you have to to whisper to a thoroughbred you won't be seen again <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's learning yeah. The, the type of horse you have under you learning how to find the button that says come on go and that's what I felt you did so beautifully which is why you got yourself into the top 10 and I mean there were hundreds of people that got nowhere near the top 10 so you can be really proud of yourself for having both of yourselves having got that far and I think the, the the lesson I feel you're taking away from it is not to be too much infinite attention to detail on the way yeah, yeah. perfect and just say come on you're not going forwards keep going and bingo the jump comes up 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, my riding was so... You could see when I was riding, my riding was so backwards. I think when we both lost that confidence in that first... I was holding her back. So I was quite lucky she actually jumped it, really. I know, I um, completely agree. And it wasn't she wasn't she game to say, don't worry, Mum, I'll get over even though I'm Yeah, she was. She was very oh, honest wow. about it. Yeah. But it's such and a good then... thing you point out there, that your lack of certainty about everything was making you hold her back because you yeah. feel if you don't go too fast then you've got time to get out of trouble but of course we've forgotten in that moment the phrase that every education on horses tells us the horse must go forwards the horse must go forwards and there is a big difference between a horse galloping off yeah. and taking you forward in a normal pace and that's what whisper did the second time she didn't go any faster if we had a speedometer on her she'd have been the same miles per hour but she went with desire and yeah. that's the key for me and why I wanted you in that top 10 because you changed her from not sure not sure which I think you were both saying as you told yeah. her, to I'm sure we can do it I'm sure we can do it and she said yeah we can but we don't go any faster than this but we're going with desire and yeah. I thought it was a great lesson for everybody that watched to to see that you get that sort of a horse who's much much more like a cob. They don't go flat out, or some do, actually. I have seen some very hot cobs, um, like a racehorse. They just go in their own time. But desire is the thing you have to make sure is there. And if it isn't starting with you, yeah. you want it, as opposed to going, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I dare do this. So that you have to grow through, and you did. Uh, we all have that doubt at the beginning, but then you have to just... I think there's a wonderful phrase in England, anyhow, throw your hat over the windmill and get on with it. And you did yeah. it absolutely superbly. And I'm I'm so appreciative. What um had you had in before you hit the challenge, what had um made you lose a bit of confidence, or were you just in early days of developing it anyhow? We've always cross country's always been our least. We've not had a lot of confidence cross country. Um is the most times I've fallen off as cross country, which doesn't help. Um, but we don't have the best partnership cross country like we do everywhere else. So it's just a lack of confidence in each other. Um, I wasn't getting anywhere and I sort of needed lessons. But is there a lot of money cross country lessons and I wouldn't get a lot out of them. So I just needed something like the challenge where you could learn it online, do it in why, your own way. Why are you clever? Aren't you a lady of the modern time that you actually said, I need to learn, but I haven't got the money to learn in, in reality, so I'm going to go online. Because we we feel this is a very early stage of learning cross-country online. And we weren't we started this at the beginning of COVID when we realised we weren't going to be able to do any teaching. We just weren't aware whether it was possible. We thought, come on, yeah. but rather like you to a feds, come on, let's give it a try. Yeah, yeah. Um, hat, hat over the windmill, and my goodness, it works. And the amount of people I go to clinics around the world, and sometimes people ride just as I want them to ride, and I want to find out who's taught them because I like to keep a little list of people that teach the same way as me. And they often turn around and say, "I've learned it on the academy." So it, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's really rewarding that, that that they have finally can piece together, rather like you piece together so much from the challenge. But I really commend you for feeling, OK, I can do my hacking, I can do my dressage, I can do my show jumping, but my cross country, we just don't feel happy together. So I'm going online to learn it. And luckily, the challenge popped up at the it right has time. Worked. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really good. It's done us the world good. What, exactly. what made you risk it because it's still 98 dollars out of your back pocket uh well luckily i work now so i have the money to. Got a bit of money uh, yes yeah but um but what made you choose this one i mean there aren't too many other cross country um things online to be sure well i've I've always watched you growing up cross country so i always knew listen the green's gonna know it all oh, <laughs> and, uh, i'd love it to was... pretend that you're right <laughs> <laughs> none of us know it all i can promise you olivia but yeah. certainly a bit of experience in 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 the background there i don't expect you were anything but a smile in your parents eyes when i was being lucky enough to win badminton <laughs> but um you eventually popped out and followed some of the wonderful things that have been lucky enough to happen to me but what an absolutely super result, and I, I can't congratulate you enough. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything else that you want to tell me that maybe went wrong in your for the challenge, but before in your riding life, did you have a fright or have you just been slowly building 
your confidence over the years? Yeah, I had um, I had a couple nasty falls before I got whisper. When I actually first had her, my mum had to lead me for two weeks on a because I was just so scared. Yeah, stemmed from that, and then taking her out cross country. She was, I mean, she still is. She can be forward. She does love her jumping, and but she'd just then run at them, and I'd have nothing. And she's so short in front. She'd then do a dirty stop, and there's nothing there. No. <laughs> so, I just lost a bit. We, well, I mean, we lost it as a partnership, like I said. Yeah. And it sort of stemmed from there, but it's sort of, we're sort of, we're getting there. We're getting there. Well, certainly, I think you are. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna say thank you so so much, Olivia, for bothering to come on and chat to us about your excellent adventure on the 28 Day CSI <laughs> Challenge, and I hope that we'll put it into circulation every year. So sometimes I think some people that have done it before would like to come and do it again because there's a lot of information in there and I don't think you're going yeah. to fall in one go. So if you come on and do it again, it would be fabulous. Are you were you interested in joining the challenge or did you think it was just an unnecessary thing to do doing the before and after videos? I did because I, I felt like it would give you a bit more of that drive. To yeah, speak yes, that yes. After yes. One, that yeah. bit of more, I've got to do it. I've just got to get on with it. Yeah, and who done. knows? I might come up with a prize, and you never yeah. do, do you? You never win any of these things. I don't, anyhow. And all of a sudden, your name was there. I know, yeah. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Well, heaps of luck with Whisper, and thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank you very much.